Welcome everyone to our Explosive Growth for 2020 workshop. This is going to be participatory. So I know it might be early morning, 10 a.m. for us in BC. And heck, if I can be up and ready to go at 10 a.m., everybody can, because I am a night owl. I don't do mornings. One of the reasons I love working for myself is that I don't have to do more mornings. I can work at 10 p.m. if I want and, and get up at 11. So now we're going to jump in. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two segments. This first segment is going to be batch working and food photography. And this section will be going up on YouTube. And then the second half of our training will be more in-depth and personal. And that piece will only be shared in my team page. And that is where I really need everybody to jump in and share if we're going to get the most out of this training possible. So let's jump in. Okay, so I'm going to have everybody that's here with us share your name, your location. You can just share a province or state if you like, how long you've been with Epicure, and a word for 2020. Now, this doesn't, don't feel like you're stuck with this word for 2020. Uh, you know, just if, if you've never sort of picked a word for a year, some people love doing this. I like doing it. I don't, um, I'm not really big on resolutions, so to speak, but I want my year to sort of have a certain vision. So my vision for 2020 is growth because I'm on a personal growth spree. I really want to grow my business. I want to grow every aspect of my life. And of course, I'm heavily into gardening. Um, so that works for that part of my life as well. So I'm Dana Kay. I've been with Epicure for 21 or 22 years. I was trying to figure this out less than I'm not sure, but it's over 20 years. It's forever. Uh, you know, and the fascinating thing for me is that a lot of people have never even been in a regular job for 20 years. And this is what I've done exclusively for 18 years. So I guess it must be 22 almost because my daughter's 18 and I was a few years into my business when I left to stay home with her. Uh, okay, so I'm in Kelowna, BC. And of course, my word for 2020 is grow. So I'm going to see, I'm going to start with Trisha because she's the first one on my screen. I don't know if she knows how to, you can unmute yourself there. Hey, Trisha, or do I need to do it for you? Um, Trisha Sturgeon. I'm in Victoria, BC on a cloudy, grim day. And I've been with Epicure 14, almost 15 years. Wow. And my word for 2020 is... Um, I like growth, but that's not the word that I that I had. It was pretty close to that. But um, it's uh, inspire. Oh, love it. Inspire. That's that's what it is. And that's inspiring me, my team, and my customers. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. We're going to go with Melanie next because I can see her face. Hi, I'm Melanie from White Rock, and I've just joined Epicure, mm -hmm. and my word for the year is connection. Oh, love it. Thanks, Melanie. Thank you. Okay, Mary, let's go with you next. I'm going to unmute you, Mary. You can jump in. Okay, so Mary's got hers on the chat, actually. Mary from Kelowna, user of Epicure almost as long as Dana. She signed up as a consultant in July, and for 2020, she can see clearly now. I love that. Clara is from Grand Prairie and joined in November, and I think Clara hasn't come up with a word for her year yet, and that's quite all right. Uh, suspicious that you just bring it on you. Um, okay, and then Danielle, I'm just going to unmute you. If you can tell us a little bit about who you are. I'm Danielle Suku. I'm from Spruce Grove, Alberta. I've been with Epicure for two months, mm -hmm. and I also am going with Connection for my word for 2020. Beautiful. All right. Thank you, everybody. So I'm going to feel free to mute yourselves if I haven't remuted you. Um, I will be asking you to jump back in. Okay, so let's jump in. So here's a very fascinating statistic. Every second, $4,000 is spent on information products. That's trainings. So people are spending $4,000 per second to be trained, and you're here training for free. And I just want to tell you, there are so many resources on the internet. Pretty much anything you want to know, you can find on the internet for free. You really can. 
So, you know, when you want to know more about batch working, when you want to know more about vision boards, when you want to know more about any of those things, that's where you're going to want to jump online and do some research. And if you're not already, you know, really jumped into podcasts, I cannot recommend them enough. Um, I am obsessed with a couple of great podcasts. We'll go into a bit more of that in the, in the end. But if you love podcasts, start making a list of what you love. I'm going to ask you to share because podcasts are one of the ways that I love to learn because I don't often have time to sit down and watch a video or I don't like to take time to do that but I can fill my brain with fantastic material in a podcast. So I'm going to recommend a couple that I love at the end of this. Okay, so let's talk about multitasking, switch tasking, and batch working. So multitasking is, I mean, there's no real true multitasking unless maybe you're listening to a podcast while you're folding the laundry. Most of us cannot do two things at once. What we're typically doing is we're switch tasking. Does that make sense to people? So when you're doing one thing and then you're like squirrel here, squirrel there, squirrel here, I'm that person. I would be typically the one to have 20 computer screens open. Things would just pop into my head and I'd be like, whoa, off on a tangent. Um, you know, this screen over here is half finished and this thing is half finished and I would just be running back and forth. And I basically put an end to that about three weeks ago and like my life has changed so much. So uh, I'm, I'm a total squirrel, and I'm going to tell you the sort of the techniques that I put in place. I don't have a diagnosis, so that's why I'm just going to call myself a squirrel, because uh, it really uh, sums up how I was working. And now, I was a waitress back in the day, and waitressing is constant switch tasking. You are constantly reprioritizing, running from one thing, running to another, and my squirrel brain loved that. Uh, my daughter is diagnosed ADD. She doesn't have hyperactivity, but she does have inattention. And so is my, so is my son. I wonder where they get that. Anyway, um, <laughs> thing. Yeah, not for me. Um, so the cool thing is that my daughter went to work at a movie theater. And my first thought was, oh, she's going to be awful. She can't organize things. And then she loved it because she was constantly switch tasking. It really fed her brain. Um, so I realized I was bringing switch tasking to my everyday life and um, I was not being efficient. And I, if you ever, anybody ever like leave the office at the end of the day or even at the end of an hour and go, what did I do? What did I get done? I've been in there all day. Like what in the heck? I was like that all the time. I'm working so much. I'm constantly working. Well, that's because I was switch tasking. I was getting nothing done. So we're going to talk about how to solve that. Now, motherhood is pretty much switch tasking, right? Parenthood and motherhood is continuous switch tasking. So there are things in your life that you can't get around switch tasking. There are things that you can. So let's jump into a little bit more of that. I'm going to jump into some batch work. So batch working is pretty much something you're probably doing now. Like currently, I live outside the city. And even though when I lived in the city, if I was going to go to Costco, I wasn't going to, I was going to get my gas at the same time. I was going to go to the post office at the same time. I was going to do X, Y, Z on the same trip. Now that's classic batch working, right? We don't go, oh, I'm going to go buy gas and then I'm going to go home and then I'm going to go to the grocery store and then I'm going to go home. That would be ridiculous. But that's what we do with our businesses and our lives without even realizing it. So we want to stop that nonsense. So let's jump in. So back. Um, batch working is really 20 minutes to a whole day, right? You're not going to, of course, do a whole day in one sitting, but batch working is 20 minutes. And the reason why you don't want to do a batch in less than 20 minutes, whenever possible, is that 20 minutes is the amount of time it really takes you to get into a task. Like you can do small batches, but tasks that really require some attention, you want to be in there 20 minutes or more. Okay, so what are you already batching? So if you're doing social, does anybody here do their social posts where you basically uh, you know, do a whole bunch at once and schedule them, things for your team? Awesome. Okay, so Chantel is batching already. So that's an example of batching. Now, hang on. I, okay, I, sorry, I am, clip, I am picking at a cuticle because that's what I do when I'm nervous. And uh, I'm just going to cut that off right now before I have 
let all of my hand. Okay, good. I know that I need to deal with my distractions. Um, and there we go. Solve that. Okay. So Chantel's already batching. Uh, you know, even if you're mailing out catalogs, you're probably not taking one catalog and mailing it out and then sitting down three days later and thinking of somebody else, right? Make a list and send them at once. That's batching. Okay. So here's a couple of things. Prior, most people's brains can do a maximum of 120 minutes after they have already perfected. If you're a total squirrel currently, you're probably not going to be able to do 120 minutes, right? That's not going to work. Uh, so typically, a lot of people say 50 minutes at, at once is a great amount of time to focus. After 50 minutes, you want to get up and move around. You're not switching to a new task. You're not be like, I did my 50 minute or 50 minutes, and now I'm going to go to Facebook for 10 minutes for my break. That's switch tasking. That rearranges your brain, and you can't come back in the same way. Okay, so you want to do a maximum of 90 minutes at one time because your brain power will decrease, and you won't be as productive, even though you think you're just friggin' rocking it. Because our brains lie to us all the time, right? Remember that. Okay, so let's talk about some things you can batch. Cooking, right? Batch cook, that's pretty much meal prep, that's batch cooking. Cleaning the house, right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna, you're probably not gonna take the vacuum out every day and vacuum a different room. That would be silly. You're gonna do all the vacuuming in one time. Phone calls, right? So set aside, even if it's 20 minutes, set yourself a 20 minute phone call block and return all of your calls in that block or do all those customer calls or your, your host coaching, right? If you set yourself a batch of time, say on a Sunday evening for half an hour, and that's when you did all your host coaching and some customer follow-ups, you could be super efficient. Reading, like this is a crazy one. It is actually, if you knew of reading that involves not just like reading blog posts, reading information, that stuff is best batched because you can sit down and you can focus and you could read things back to back and actually absorb them. Accounting and expenses. Oh my gosh, I don't. I want to look at my expenses once every three months <laughs> maximum. On Monday, I'm doing all the posts on my business page of how to how to organize your accounting. That's my background, uh, but it's not my. It's not what I love. Uh, so I do it with a movie, and I'm going to go into the details of that. But really, your accounting should be batched. And I got a quick tip for you because I know the biggest thing that people do is they have receipts everywhere and it's like chaos and it's like they're in files. I do not take my receipts out of my wallet until I'm ready to put them in a folder. I don't just have them laying around the house. I open my wallet and they go into one folder so I know where they are at the end of the year. Because here's the thing you want to think about. If your tax rate is at like 28 to 30 percent, if you lose a $10 receipt, you are handing the government $3. Seriously, that's what you have just done by losing track of one $10 receipt. You've handed the government $3 of tax. Now, that doesn't scare the Jesus out of you. And get your, to get your receipts more organized, it should. Right? So when you think it's just 10 bucks, no, it's not. You're giving away money. Okay? Let's just check our chat, see what I need on what I got going on in here. 12 envelopes every month. Yes, it. Love it. Okay, so you empty your wallet once or twice a month into that. Printing of labels, labeling catalogs, great back working. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, ladies. Um, email and message replies. You know, I have to tell you, if you have a notification for your email, turn it off. Seriously, turn it off. There is no email emergencies. You don't need to be in the middle of something like, bing, my email. Oh, I better check and see what that is. Oh, I got a sales flyer from somewhere. Oh, I'm really glad I was distracted by that thing. Right? It doesn't matter. Email is not our most current method of communication in the world. It's not a text. It's not your kids emailing you. Turn off your damn notifications and check your email once a day already. Um, paperwork. Of course, easy batch working to do. sit and do all your paperwork at once. You probably pay your bills once a month. I know I do. I throw them in a drawer and that once a month, I pull them out and get those all paid. Okay. <clears throat> now, social media is the biggest thing to batch in our business. Now, social media can be very involved. Sometimes you might want to post daily, right? So if you're posting your social groups or your, uh, uh, your page daily, don't post every day. Do it all. Sit down. Say, go through your phone. Get a bunch of photos. Right? So maybe your first step 
is to, um, oh, okay, well, let's back up a minute. Main feeds. So batch working is best done for your main feed, right? So your main feed of your Facebook, your business page, your Instagram, batch working is perfect for that. The stuff on the fly, like your cooking dinner and the real life action, that's what stories are for. Right, so when you're like, oh, I'm making X, Y, Z, and I might post photos of my process, that actual post with the details of that recipe might, might not go up for a week or two. That's okay. You can put it up right away, but you don't have to. So the, the, if you wanna be on the fly of life, that is often your story. And we're gonna do a training with Rose, who is amazing with stories. Uh, it was actually my assistant who came in and went like, you've gotta watch this. And I get up every morning and I watch Rose's stories. Uh, Rose LeBlanc, Rose, yeah, Rose LeBlanc on Instagram. She's got fantastic stories. She's sponsored in the U.S. just from her Instagram story. She didn't even have a feed. So make sure you're following her because she's really doing a great job. Okay, <clears throat> so mini batches in your social, maybe a day or if you have a half an hour at a time, maybe that half an hour is I'm going to find all my photos. I'm going to find my photos. I'm going to get them edited and I'm going to put them in my favorites folder. So when I've got my next day ready to do my social. I've got all my photos ready, right? So that could be batch number one. Batch number two might be uh, getting your content written. You know, here's the content I'm gonna write with this post. I'm, I've got a system called Planoly. It can be free if you don't want to schedule more than 30 days in advance. Uh, so Planoly is an online, is a computer app. I much prefer to schedule my Instagram on Planoly. It shows you how to lay out your grid, there's lots of training on that on the internet. Uh, but what I love about Planoly is that I can uh, put, I can upload my photos as I've got them. I can have all my photos in there and then I can go back in the next day and I'm like, okay, let me add some text. And then maybe the third day or the third batch of time I can go in and I can schedule when those are going to happen. So it's free if you don't want to put more than 30 things sort of organized ahead. Okay, so that's a great system. Now here's a couple of things. All um, Facebook and Instagram, they're owned by the same people, right? If you didn't know that, they're owned by the same people. They want authentic communication. So using a scheduling app does not come across as authentic communication, and you do not get the same um, play in the newsfeed. So even when I'm using Planoly, I don't let Planoly post my photos for me. I don't use it to auto post. Because if it auto posts, it will get less traction. But I schedule it all, and then Planoly sends me a little notification. I just click on it, and it copies my words and my photo, and, it, and I can basically pop it into Instagram. So Planoly lets me schedule and remind myself because guaranteed I would forget. Um, and then I don't have to go open, like find my photo and write the text, blah, blah, blah. And it has all my hashtags. So I, you can build groupings of hashtags. So it's all right there. And that's the biggest pain in the butt on Instagram is finding all the hashtags to add to your posts. Oh my word. So you can save them all in the notes app, but in Planoly, you can set up multiple hashtag groups. So you could have a set of hashtags for good food, real results. And a set of hashtags for this. Yes, Chantal. Oh, you're muted, hon. Yeah. Can you, um, sorry, Dana, what's the, is it Planoly? Plan, like, like the just the way it sounds yeah hang on i know i'll i'll let me go in there and show you okay thank you not no problem let me just move this little box oh i don't know how i got to the catalog something, something went wrong there go back to the family here we go Okay, so here's my Planoly. Why is there nothing on my grid? Am I in my own Planoly? <laughs> There's nothing on here. <laughs> What's going on? Okay, hang on. I don't, I don't know if it's because I'm, oh, you know what? See how slow it is? It's because I'm streaming and trying to get something on the internet and I live in the woods. So uh, 
here's the system. Unfortunately, it's not actually showing you anything due to my internet connection. Hang on, I can hardwire myself. Just a moment. Of course, I've organized all of my cords so they're all tied up and they're very hard for me. There, if I can go back to hardwired. Hmm. Okay, well, you can at least see the name of it. Um, I was gonna show you the hashtag groupings. Um, looks like that's not gonna happen. So I don't know what is, yeah, it's gotta be my internet. Uh, okay, so let me just close that. Let me just see if I can just try it again, if it just comes up fresh. Ah, okay. Okay, let's read the chat while we're going to see if this is going to pop up. Screenshot. Yeah, I can totally do that. Yeah, so, oh, here we go. All right, so these are all the different photos that I have got set. Um, so what it does is these are all different things that I've thrown in there. A lot of these are too old because I started this in December and I hadn't done my post past posting. Um, so I've got all of those photos up there and then I can open the photo and I can edit the text. So this one already has the text added and I could set it to auto post to Instagram and auto post to Facebook, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna have it scheduled and it will remind me. Um, and if your Instagram is set up as a business page, you can auto post your Instagram to your business page. Or if your Instagram is set up, you can, it'll auto post to your, to your personal page. Um, so what I love about here is my hashtags. So I've got all sorts of different hashtag settings. I've got all of that sort of stuff that invites them to my business page. All of that stuff is already done and I never have to do it again. And then I just decide which grouping of hashtags I want to attach to which post. So even if you just get the free one to organize yourself in the background, when I'm doing a quick post on the fly, I could just open my plan, go to the hashtags, hit copy, and it'll post the, and I can post them right into my Instagram. Sort of like using my notes app, it's just sort of all organized in one place. So that's Planoly, okay? So let's go back over here. Okay. Oh, I might have to click through again. Okay, now the first thing you're gonna wanna do is to do a brain dump because if you're not doing a brain dump or a thought download, you're still gonna be scattered. This is the number one thing that changed my life is doing a brain dump. I do paper. I'm an electronic girl. I love everything electronically. I don't like paper. Paper for a brain dump works better for me. Um, you know, so here's my, on December 18th, I started a Christmas day brain dump, a, a, a Christmas break brain dump. All the stuff that I kind of had on my to-do list that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get that done over the break. And as things are done, of course, I just cross them off. Now, when I'm not home or I'm not in my office, thoughts come to me, things that I wanna do, ideas, I email those to myself, right? Or put them in an app. Because if I don't, they stay in my brain and they keep coming back to the forefront. The number of times I have thought about sending Kathy Love a catalog is ridiculous. You know, and I'm like, okay, just write that down and it won't keep coming and taking up space, right? Write this down, like it really is life changing. But a brain dump, my first one took me hours. It was everything in my head that I had to do. Life, family, home, yard, business. Hours of just whew, brain loading and downloading. Suddenly I slept. How amazing is that, right? You don't have all that stuff keeping you awake. But after you brain dump, then you can prioritize, right? I looked at a bunch of those things and went, ooh, what can I get somebody else to do? That was the first thing I did. And then I went through and said, okay, you know, which things can I group together? What things really matter? What things are really important? What things are like would be nice to do in my life? So there's, I've done a whole blog post on brain dumping and, and getting those things out of your brain. But really, that is going to be the first thing you're going to want to do. Um, and just, it's a continual process, right? Continual add to your list. If you're ever feeling stressed or overwhelmed, it means you haven't brain dumped. Because seriously, getting it out of your head takes away so much of that stress. Uh, okay, so 
And now let's talk about eliminating distractions. The first thing I did when I started this is I turned off my Facebook and I set my phone to do not disturb, right? Because otherwise that thing would be going off as I'm in the middle of this training. So a brain dump, if you do not want to get redistracted, it takes you 23 minutes to get effectively back on task. This is study, this is fact, this is science. When you get distracted, it takes you 23 minutes to really get back on task properly. So that's how come you don't want to just be like answering the phone in the middle of your tap, your basket patching. My kids know do not disturb it can be overridden by phone calls, two phone calls back to back. So if you're not using do not disturb yet, tell your family. I usually text my daughter because she's the one who texts me all the time randomly and expects me to text back in three minutes. And if I don't, she sends me another text. I'll just send her a message going, hey, working for the next couple hours, you know, call me if you really need me. And so the do not disturb, if it's an emergency, they can override that and get through to me. I even have it on my phone. My phone sets like that from 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. Because I have team members in Nova Scotia. They get out of bed at 6 a.m. and they want to send me a text. That's 2 a.m. my time. Feel free to send me a text. I'm not going to be disturbed because I've got my phone frozen and do not disturb it. You're not going to bother me. Right? So it's a beautiful way to let them get stuff out of their head when they need to and I don't have to be disturbed in the middle of the night. If my family really needs me and I don't call in the first time, you know they're going to call back until they reach me, right? Um, okay, so if you have a squirrel brain, the number one thing that I'm going to tell you is play music when you're batching, okay? So here's the thing. If you've got a squirrel brain, it wants to do two things at once. It absolutely does. It feels stressed when it doesn't have more than one source of input. So when you're playing music that you know well, not new music, because you're going to be like, ooh, what's that? I noticed that one time and I have a playlist of 100 songs. It's my usual everyday stuff that I listen to. There's words. It's not just background music. But I, I know the songs, I know the music, it doesn't distract me. One time I was working so long that I went past my 100 song playlist. Uh, I had a whole day scheduled and suddenly there was new music, right? Spotify sends new music that, I, that you think, and I'd be like, ooh, what's that? Ooh, what's that? And I was constantly distracted by it. But if you're playing music, you know your part of your brain that wants to be busy will, will quietly listen to that music while the working part of your brain functions. It's a massive tip. I discovered that by accident about a month ago, and I was like, holy crap, I'm getting so much more done. And it's a good upbeat music, so that in the back of my mind, my brain's like having a little woo-woo party while my mind is functioning, okay? So try that. Um, and I didn't understand. My kids did this all through school. They had special accommodations to wear their earphones when they were doing their work, and I'm like, geez, you guys. That it makes no sense at all. Well, look at that. It actually works for mom too. So that's been life changing. Okay, signs. Oh my gosh. You know, if you've got kids or a family, put a sign on your damn door. You know, I actually bought a stop sign at the dollar store and I put a note on it that basically said, you may disturb me if someone is bleeding, if there's a fire or if we need an ambulance. And my kids knew that that's what, if I was really going to try to get something done, that's what they could disturb me for. I mean, they weren't two, so it worked, right? Otherwise, they were in my office every five minutes talking about Hannah Montana and Zach and Cody. And it's like, I don't freaking care about Minecraft right now. I want to get something done. When the, when the stop sign comes off my door, I'll come out and talk about Zach and Cody and Minecraft, but not in the middle of trying to get something done, right? I'm going to lose 20 minutes. When every time my daughter comes in to talk about Hannah Montana, thankfully she's 18 now, and we don't talk about Hannah Montana anymore. Um, okay, work toys. If you've got young kids, this was the biggest thing that changed my life. <clears throat> I found really fantastic toys, and they were for work time only. The kids did not get to use those toys unless I was working. So it got to the point where my kids would come to me and go, Mom, Mom, you should go to work. And I'd be okay. Sure will. And they got those special toys that were, of course, obviously not like cymbals and drum sets, but they were, you know, special toys that they got while mom was working. And every time I'd get at least a half an hour a day of focus time because they wanted to use those special toys. Okay, 
your notifications. I don't have notifications from my messenger. You know what? I don't think I need to be blinging off in a different direction every two minutes. Here's the thing. When you are constantly chasing your notifications, that's a dopamine hit. Same thing when you are batch, switch batching. You're getting a dopamine hit because you're like, oh, I got something that, oh, I got over here. Your, your brain is more tired at the end of the day because you've been dopamine hitting all day long. When I get at least a half an hour to an hour of focused batched work in the day, I am like 10 o'clock at night. I've got ideas coming into my head. I'm still ready to roll. If I'm switch tasking all day by 7 p.m., I'm like uh, scrolling social, not even seeing it, right? If you do that and you're brain dead at 7 p.m., you're probably switch tasking all day and you don't realize it. And I mean, some jobs, if you're a receptionist, you have no choice. You're going to switch task all day and that's what your job is, uh, right? So keep that in mind. Even if you just take a half an hour of focused brain time at some point during, towards the end of that day, it can really just slow your brain down, bring you back. So I highly recommend you try to get at least one half an hour of focused batch time a day just to, just to freshen up your mind and leave you not brain dead by seven. Yeah. Uh, you know what, and bottom line, get a sitter. You might have to. I had to have a sitter all the time when I was working. I built my business, my daughter was three and my boys were seven when I became a single parent. I did not have a supportive ex-husband who's gonna take the kids. The kids thrived when they had to go with their dad and I ended up actually bringing a nanny in from another country just so that I could work. Uh, because I wanted to have somebody to do all those things that my kids didn't need me for. But until I had a nanny, I hired babysitters. And my kids would be playing on the other side of my house at four years old with the sitter while I was in my office working. And really, that whatever I paid for that, now it's probably $15 an hour you pay for a sitter. I have no idea. I haven't had to do that for so many years. But it really made a massive difference. I could get three hours worth of what I would do with my kids around done in an hour. It was totally worth it. And of course, hiring a house, housekeeper, it was like one of the best things you could do. If you don't have one yet, uh, I highly recommend it because one extra cooking class a month, you will earn more money than you pay your housekeeper. Seriously, right? One cooking class a month is going to bring you, it's gonna take you about three hours, it's gonna earn you four hours of housekeeping. Well, there you go, you just gained an hour. And you don't have to clean your own toilet, so there's a total win win. Okay, so let's move on to pockets of time. So the pockets of time are sort of the everything else. Batch as many things as you can so you can feel focused and alert, but pockets of time is where the rest of your stuff will poke in around your life. Okay, so let's talk about anybody have sort of things that can't be batched? Anybody have something? that they can think of or where they use pockets of time. I'd love to get your ideas. I've got a few down here. So if anybody wants to share, and if you, how would you describe a pocket of time? The first thing I kind of think of is standing in the Costco line, right? When the Costco line is like super duper long, back in the day, I don't know what I did. When I'm, and if I try to chat with the people around me first, because that's a little bit more interesting. I could just people watch. But if I'm not, if the people standing near me aren't into chatting, my phone comes out and I'm doing pocket of time work. And that's when I might check my notifications, right? A pocket of time, when you got it five minutes, that's when you check your notifications instead of scrolling your notifications all day long. Um, I might reply to a couple of messages in my pockets of time. I might check my email and just open the ones that I know that I want to unsub from or that I know that it's just a quick read, not something that I have to, you know, get into. I can check and get four or five emails removed so that when I come back to my desk, I can do my actual replies. Um, <clears throat> as a parent, I had constant pockets of time sitting in my car, right? So one of the things that I often do with my pockets of time in my car, in, I have a car car case if you don't have a car case you should um in my car kit it's got you know my catalogs and all the things that i need, might need on the go it's got some samples it's got meal solutions because i tip with those suckers right that is my tip 
I'm going to hand somebody three, three meal solutions as a $10 tip for something rather than giving them $10. I'm getting advertising. They love it. Uh, so I've got that stuff in the car, but I also have Nook cards. So when I've got, if I'm sitting somewhere and I've got a five minute delay, I could pull out my phone and scroll, or I could pull out a couple of note cards and write, write a couple of notes, right? Just keep things at your ready so that you can use those pockets of time because typically we disconnect and go into social, which is fine, but sometimes you just really want to be productive and not do that. Uh, yeah, so quick email overview, right? So it's not, you're not typically doing your major replies standing in the Costco line. Maybe you are, but that's where I'm, you know, basically cleaning a few things out of my inbox. So when I get home, I have less to deal with. Deleting or editing photos, right? When you're in the Costco line or somewhere, that is a great, you know, if you're like me, you probably take 20 shots to get a good one. <laughs> um, and you've got all of these extra photos on your phone. That's when you can open your phone and go, you know what? I'm going to like go through. What I do is I look through my photos and I just put into my favorites, the two or three that I think are the best, delete all the rest. And then I can, when I get home, I can look at them on the big screen or whoever I'm going to use them. But that's a great use of the pockets of time. When I'm in the airplane, I'm watching a movie and deleting photos from my phone. <laughs> so I'll be watching a movie on my iPad and, you know, watching a movie, especially like your average movie, does not involve for me, I pick my fingernails if I don't have two things to do because my squirrel brain needs a second task. So I use that second task as a time to clean my emails or do something like that. When I'm driving, if I don't have a really engrossing podcast, I pick my fingernails. It's just my brain needs something to do habit. When I do a second thing at the same time, I, I don't pick up my cuticles. Right, so your your thing could be whatever, um, right? Whatever that is, all, often we have, if we have a squirrel brain, we have that sort of little background habit that we don't realize. Okay, you can check in with a few customers. Send a few voice drops to your team members. Okay, and if you haven't used the voice feature in Messenger, it's fantastic. Um, now, I have voice text. If you've ever received a text from me, you might have some, some, some sort of little weird thing. Um, one of the things I learned from voice texting is that I mumble. I had no idea how much I mumbled, but when you voice text and your girl in your little phone can't figure out what you're saying, you're like, oh yeah, I guess I'm not saying that very clearly. And um, the beautiful thing about voice texting is I'm so much faster. I can quickly go back and edit, but I can also leave voice messages just like voicemail. So if you haven't used that feature yet, it's under, if you're, if you're an iPhone messenger user, I think it's just under the dots. Hang on, let me just clarify. Yes, so I want to send a message to this person. So on my phone, you see those little four dot things? Where is it? Oh, hang on. Yeah, the little four dots there. If I hit those four dots, I can send a voice message. So a lot of people have no idea that's even there. So you can hit the four dots. Now, the, the biggest challenge for me is if you get a voice message, and I say like comma and exclamation point, please ignore me because I'm used to voice texting. So I often have a lot of people going, what the heck, why are you saying comma and an exclamation point in your voice text uh, or voice message? But it's a great way to just simply connect with people. Pick up your phone, drop a quick voice text when you've got some time. Um, okay, and the small stuff on your to-do and brain dump list is what you poke into your pockets of time, okay? So now let's talk about, whoops, hang on. Let's talk about brainless, busy work. Oh, I'm going to check our chat here. Yes, hands-free, love it. Okay, brainless, busy work. Now, if you're a squirrel like me, when you're doing brainless, busy work, like washing dishes, emptying the dishwasher, you probably get distracted and you probably go to another task, pick up your phone, any of those things. So one of the keys for that is I have a podcast going whenever I'm doing brainless busy work because of that way, those two pieces of my brain that want to be engaged are, right? I don't need to think to fold laundry. If I do, I probably need some more help. 
Um, I don't need to think when I'm sort of driving my car. That's what I've got a podcast on. When I'm gardening, you and I had such, so many great podcasts. I would be in my garden at 11 p.m. with a headlamp on gardening because I was so engrossed in my podcast. I didn't want to stop, but I knew when I went in the house, I would. There are some amazing things. Yes, Chantel, jump in. I just, I just have a question about the podcast because I find that if I'm doing something else, but I'm not taking it in. So I try to, and then it's like, well, if I'm sitting there listening to a podcast that I could be doing something else. So you just have it as background music kind of. I'm, you know what? I, I'm focusing. I would never be able to have a podcast on when I was working. That would never work okay. because my brain's actively engaged in working, right? Because I need to use my brain. But when I'm doing laundry or dishes, I don't need to use my brain. That's when I would do a podcast. So it's, so still getting, never, it's still getting in there. It's just like in your back subconscious. Well, and it's, it's kind of what I'm focusing on because I'm not focusing on the dishes. Oh, okay, okay. Right? Okay. So I'm actually focusing on the podcast and the dishes or the laundry or the mopping is just sort of happening in the background. Now, it took me a while. In the beginning, I'd be like, I was constantly hitting the backup 30 seconds mm -hmm. on my podcasts. So I'm like, oh, my mind went somewhere else because that's what my mind likes to do. But it took me a few months of listening to podcasts and batch working, right? The more I batch work, the less my, my mind needed to scroll off somewhere. Because usually your mind is going to your list of things that you need to do. And if you've got all of those things written down on your list, your mind doesn't keep saying, send Kathy Lava down catalog, okay. right? But if you have all of those things still flowing around your brain, your brain will not be able to focus on a podcast because it will jump to all of those things that are still floating. Okay. All right. Okay. So, you know, I email myself and I know, like, I forget stuff. Half of my good ideas come in the hot tub. Right. So I actually take my, my phone to the hot tub with me at night. Um, I was just cleaning my inbox because I would just send myself the ideas, a quick voice message, and then send it as an email. I was just cleaning my emails that I had from November. I was like reading these emails going, wow, that's great. I had no idea. I had totally forgotten these things that came to me in that half asleep in the hot tub space in my mind. And I was like, holy crap, I need to do these things. They're fantastic. Um, so getting them out of my head allowed me to have more ideas. So that's the thing, right? So you want it, you've got to do all these things together or you will swirl on your podcasts. So if you find that you're listening and your brain has gone somewhere else entirely and you have no idea what just happened, it's probably because you need to bring them. Yeah. And I would never try to do a podcast. If I was learning something new or I was like putting together an Ikea thing where I had to like look at the diagram, I wouldn't be listening to a podcast because I would hear nothing. So it's only, you can only listen to podcasts while your brain does not need well, you're on autopilot, basically, right? On autopilot, if I'm looking for a new street or trying to find my host's house, just like everybody else, I got to turn down my music and turn off my podcast because I will not find it, right? We have to turn down our music in order to see better. It's just kind of how that is in life. Same thing with your podcast. So get in the habit, though, of, of rebacking the 30 seconds, and you will, once you start um, brain dumping, you won't have the same problem. But I totally was there in the beginning as well. So it's the autopilot stuff of life. Your laundry, your dishes, your gardening, your housework, your driving. Um, I don't listen to podcasts when I'm grocery shopping. I have music on when I'm grocery shopping. I have an earbud in. Um, and I'm, you know, bopping my way to the grocery store. And I've had people go, oh, you're happy today. And I'm like, oh, didn't even realize I'm like dancing in the lineup. Right. So that sort of thing, I can have my music on in the background while I'm thinking and walking through the aisles, but I couldn't really do a podcast while I'm thinking. OK, um, now we're going to talk about podcasts and if, I would love to hear. I know Melanie's got some podcasts she'd love. I love everybody to throw out some podcasts that you love because it is my best way to learn. Um, I love reading and I love audio. So I'm going to start with my favorite podcaster. And the person to learn from is Malcolm Gladwell. The man is brilliant. I could listen to him forever. He's Canadian. He's amazing. Um, I have his books. I have Audible. It is my, I love, love, love my Audible. It's one of the best things I did. I actually have it as a business write-off. 
because I am not just listening to, you know, Jack Canfield. Or I'm not Jack Canfield. I'm not listening to James Patterson. I'm listening to Jack Canfield. I'm listening to Malcolm Gladwell. I have all of his books. They are phenomenal. His podcasts, he's a storyteller. You will learn how to sell, tell, write stories better than ever listening to Malcolm Gladwell. Um, so he's not a specific how to do X, Y, Z in your life. He's how to understand life and the things that happen and to look at things from a different angle. And it really has expanded my mind massively. Now for business podcasts, I highly recommend um, a few different ones. I really, of course, love, uh, uh, hang on, I'm having a brain fart. Okay, hang on, o opening my podcast app. Here's, when I, here's how I can actually be effective to tell you my favorite podcast. So Revisionist Histories of Malcolm Gladwell, I love those. I'm actually re-listening to the entire four seasoning, seasons because I don't remember the specific details because I didn't necessarily have to. And what here's the other thing. When I'm listening to a podcast and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to remember this fact or this piece, I actually send myself an email. Gladwell Podcast 12, Minute 14. Like if there's a piece that I need to go to back and I need to like really dive into deeper, I send myself an email to remind me to go back to that piece if I'm in the middle of something and I can. Uh, okay, so in here I've got experts on expert. I really love Dak Shepard. Uh, he's got he's got his armchair expert, but then he's got experts. So experts in their field come on his podcast, and I have just learned so much about the world. Um. Tony Robbins has a great podcast. Productivity Paradox is great. A Rise podcast with Rachel Hollis is lovely. Um, the Gold Digger with Jenna Kutcher. She's got some great podcasts. The Life Coach School. Hello. You know, we all know Brooke Castillo, or if we don't, we should. She's got a fantastic podcast. Um, Online Marketing Made Easy with Amy Porterfield is a great podcast. The journal is a fantastic 20 minute snippets of how the world's working. Fascinating. Uh, yeah, I have so many podcasts. And of course, there's lots of really interesting, fun podcasts. Um, you know, if you want to try something a little bit out there um, and you have a bit of a, not necessarily a dirty mind, but you're open to that, there's a really fun podcast called My Dad Wrote a Porno. It's my very first podcast. And it is. A gentleman whose dad, Rocky Flintstone is his pen name, wrote this porno, and it's not a porno, it's not, it's horrible. It, the guy knows nothing. It's, but it's a comedy of these three people right, reading this and then critiquing it, and it's hilarious. Um, and that was how I was introduced to podcasts. I didn't even know they existed. So that was my introduction, and the reason I share that, uh, because it really introduced me to this massive world. I started with, you know, the humor podcast, and got introduced to this massive world of business building that just boggles my mind. Okay, so a few strategies. Remove your thoughts and ideas from your head, right? Anytime something pops into your head, don't go, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, and push it back. Get it out. It's gonna make a massive difference to your life. Use an app. I love the app Keep. That is my sort of to-do list app is Keep. It's Google Keep. Um, I love that I can use it on my computer. I'm more of a computer person than a, than a phone person. So I need to have apps that are online easily accessed as well as on my phone, right? So you can pop things into your app, email them to yourself. If you're not home and able to write them on your list. Uh, paper. Paper can be uber powerful. A lot of people are talking about this in the, in the training space. Even if you're not a paper person, having some form of paper writing really does, it's sort of a different form of release. So even when I email it to myself, I still write it on my paper when I get back because it just, it, it does something different in my brain. Uh, maybe that's because I'm from the paper generation. Although I, you know, I don't even take invoices to a cooking class. That's how anti-paper I am. Um, but for certain things like this, it really does make a difference for me. Okay. So. That was that. Now, social images. Now, oh, let's just back. Oh, hang on. Let's just back up and see. Does, I would love anybody's feedback. What are you doing already? 
what are you you know what do you think you're going to put in place what seems usable for you feel free to anybody to jump in and share yes i can send the podcast list good call trisha anybody have a podcast to share anybody have anything chantelle go ahead Bell. um i also started using audible and i love it because i don't make the time to read and i don't like to read but i like listening so the one I really liked was um, the woman who wrote Grace. Her name is Shonda Rhimes, I think. Oh, it, yeah. It's the year of yes. And uh, yeah, it was super, super good. And she's very real in there. Um, but I love the brain dump thing. I think I'm definitely a squirrel. <laughs> I'm surrounded by squirrels. Although I see the people <laughs> that are on here where I'm like, yeah, we're squirrels. <laughs> yep. um, bright, shiny things. So um, I really like that. And um, yeah, I think that's gonna be my, my thing is the, the, the dump. Beautiful, sure. yeah, so read the blog post that sort of gives you a bit more information on it. It's on my, it's on my site and it really helped change your mind. Oh, it's, okay. it's on your team page, sorry? Um, it's on my, I'll put it in the comments in this event, but not everybody's in the event. So it's on my blog, Okay. inakl.com. Dana okay, thanks. Okay, anybody else care to share? I'm gonna force y'all to share later, but you don't have to share now. <laughs> all right, we're gonna jump into social images then. <clears throat> now, one of the things that I see a lot is that. That was taken from my newsfeed. You don't need to leave the nasty black crap at the top and the bottom, people. Clean up your images, right? When we screenshot, the screenshot is automatically going to do that. Now, here's the thing. If you didn't know, you can click on a photo in Facebook and save the photo. You don't actually have to screenshot like this with all the crap on the top and the bottom. You can actually just hit the image and go save photo. There's a thing. It's a thing. Okay. So A, hit save photo. B, if you're not hitting save photo and you're doing a screenshot, clean the damn thing up. That looks nasty. It, but here's the thing, we don't realize, because when we post it, we don't see all that. When you just look at your photos in your phone, you often don't see that back and the top and bottom. You have no idea, it looks like that, and you often put it in your newsfeed, you don't know. So I'm just throwing it out here to be aware, because obviously this person did not know, right? Um, and they probably grabbed it from somebody else. So just make sure that you're cleaning up your stuff, because it really just looks unprofessional if you're not. Um, editing your food photos. Unless you are magical, you absolutely never have the right light for food photography. Food photography is best done. Like I know people who write cookbooks, they do, they actually watch the weather. Seriously, watch the weather, have all of their foods ready for photographing in a sunny day in the shade at 4 p.m. That's when you can get the best food photos. Right? That's not going to work in my world. So you're going to have to edit. Uh, so a screenshot of a screenshot of a screenshot. Now, I've seen so many things that I look, they might look okay on my mobile. I open them on my computer and it's like fuzzy, fuzzy crap. So if you're screenshotting of screenshotting of screenshotting, it's going to look like crap on somebody's computer. So you need to keep that in mind. So you want to save a photo, not screenshot whenever possible. And if you're grabbing an image that somebody grabbed from somebody that grabbed from somebody, if you have an original somewhere that you can find, go find that. Don't just save everybody's screenshots that you find on social when the images are in your Epicure back office. It's going to make a massive difference to how clear your look is. And you got to remember, not everybody's living on a phone. Okay, so let's do some food photography 101 basics. If mouths do not water, when they look at your photo, it's not ready, okay? Now, a huge part of my plating and my dinner deciding, so when I decide what I'm gonna make for dinner, I'm actually like, okay, I'm gonna make stroganoff. And I'm like, mm, stroganoff's kinda ugly. Like, it's a giant pile of brown on a plate, right? So when I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna make that not look like a heaping pile of poo, I actually Google plating stroganoff. And I look at the images and I'm like, okay, how did these people make stroganoff not look horrendous? 
I'm going to use some of their ideas. So whenever you're not sure, I was, I tried to take some photos at chocolate pudding. Kathleen and I just about peed ourselves about how horrendous my chocolate pudding looked. So I got online and I Googled plating chocolate pudding and I'm like, Ooh, okay, here's some ideas. You don't need to come up with it. Brilliant people have already come up with ideas. You can just take their ideas and turn it into your plates and your lighting in your home. Right? So when I'm doing my, my dinner, I'm not going to pick everything from the same color palette because I know that I'm going to put my photos on social for sales and ideas and motivating my customers and giving them ideas. I'm not going to pick yams and carrots and something else that's orange and, you know, an orange seasoning on my chicken. My plate's going to look like crap. I'm going to specifically pick different vegetables. A, that's better for my body and B, it's better for my photo. Okay, so actually take those things into, into consideration. Um, your photo should be vibrant and crisp. The number one thing we don't do is clean the camera thing. That thing is covered in crap all the time. There's almost no time that your computer, um, your phone camera is 100% clean. You would have to be magical for that to happen. You don't keep your phone in a case. It's always got crap on the lens. Remember that and clean it every time. Let natural lighting whenever possible and never ever use a flash because your flash actually messes up your food photography. Turn on extra lights in your house if you need to. When I am doing food photos in my kitchen, when I'm cooking, I have like one light on. When I'm doing my photos, I've got four sets of lighting on. I've got the lighting on in the dining room 30 feet away because it casts, or maybe not 30 feet away, my house isn't that big, I know. Anyway, the dining room 12 feet away, that lighting gets an extra glow in my kitchen and actually makes my photos better. Okay, get your main focused centered in your grid. So if you imagine your food, your photo, imagine like nine boxes, you want to, whatever your main part that you want people to focus on, that should be in the middle of that box of grids, right? You don't want to have like a giant amount of white space on one side and not on the other. Uh, so just make sure that you're, you don't have to be centered exactly, but just try to get it focused in that middle section. Um, you can go online and look at food, you know, go to lots of different websites. There's some great ideas. I've got one picture coming up here. And now there's lots of ways to frame. You can photo, you can take your photo from above. You can take it at an angle. And sometimes if it's something like a burger or, you know, something juicy, mouth-watering, something, you might want to be at eye level, right? So you don't always have to have the same uh, framing. Some people like to have the same framing all the time because it's part of their prettiness of their Insta feed. I'm not there. <laughs> I just want my food to look good and I want it to be vibrant and I want people to go, ooh, that looks gorgeous. Uh, now, you also want to be watching for the shadow of your arms and your camera. The number of times I've seen a food, photo, food photo and I can see like a gray sort of shape, shadow of a camera over top of the plate. It's there. You don't realize it. And it, we're not trying to make this hard. It's just some small little things to make a big difference. I have had people make my recipes and then put the photo online and tag me. And I have my, my Facebook set that nothing shows on my timeline without my approval. If you don't have that setting, do it. And I'm like, wow, that's ugly as heck. You're not letting, I'm not letting that photo go on my timeline, right? Like I had somebody make something and it was gray. And then she was tagging me and I'm like, ah, I did not make gray, ugly food. I don't want that associated with myself because nobody would make the dish that she made because it looked so bad. Okay, turn the plate, right? Maybe that one angle isn't right. You might need to turn the plate and go, oh, this is a better shot. If you're really highlighting your protein, maybe you want your protein side of the plate to be what's the fake feature. But if you're really talking more about your vegetables, turn your plate so that your shot is from your vegetables with the protein in the back, right? Just take a look at your plate from different angles and go, which one looks best? It adds like an extra one minute. Like I would say I'd probably take one more minute with a photo, even my, my kids are psychotic now. They know, even Christmas breakfast, everybody's poised, ready to dive into the photo that we're gonna, and they're like, wait, wait. And there was somebody else during it, wait, wait. 
mom has to take a photo first. They know they can't even touch the food until we have a photo because it's part of my business. Um, so, um, and add style features. So decide what sort of style you're going with. I don't recommend a filter on your food photos because that changes the color, but maybe you want to, you know, maybe you just want to add, you know, a salt and pepper shaker in the background. Maybe you want to have a napkin. Maybe you want to have extra things just to, you could even have the things you cooked with, but that just adds some extra features to your photo. I'm mostly just the food uh, because I'm not, I'm not really styling my food. I've just started photographing it. Maybe I'll advance that, but I don't. Um, okay, and if there's strong, oops, strong lines in your image, if you've got a line going across your, your image, like it's, you know, got a square plate, line up with your lines. It actually makes a big difference. I have no idea why the word idea is on our screen. Awesome. Okay, so here's an example from Serious Eats, right? So they could have just taken the photo of their chili or their beans or whatever this is. So they've shown a few different instances, right? So basically adding the toppings to their bowl rather than just having them on the side and then keeping the toppings on the side and putting the dollop of sour cream has really changed that image, right? That does not take a lot of time. That was probably an extra 30 seconds. And it really, their chili is like, wow, in the last photo when it's kind of like, e, the first one. So that's an idea of styling, right? All of these, this napkin and the, and the spoon is styling. And you never want a dirty spoon. Don't put a dirty spoon or a dirty fork, please. I did that once and I looked at the photo not long ago and I'm like, ah, I can see like the lines where I like already took a slurp of my food and there was like food lines on the spoon. Ah, it's disgusting. Nobody wants to see my spoon and food lines, yuck. So just use a few little techniques like that to change up your photo. Okay, so now here is my photo of the new, this is going on the internet today, so I can't say what it is. Uh, so this is my food photo of a new Epicure product that's launching in January. That's what it looked like the first time I take it. Now you can see in that the image, it's okay. It ain't good. It's decent. I've got all the parts on there. They're all looking pretty. I added the cilantro for extra color and extra flavor. And though that photo is not ready for publication, it's dull. It is not vibrant. It is not crisp. So I tried a different angle with the plate. Maybe this is a better angle. And then this is what it ends up like. That's the same photo, just edited to proper lighting, right? So I only did two things to change the lighting on that photo. Hopefully you can see what a difference that is from the before and after of how vibrant and bright it is. So my rule of thumb when I'm doing it is I'm, editing and I'm like looking at the food. I've got my camera and I've, after I've taken my photo and I'm looking at the food and I'm going, okay, that's about the right amount of light. I'm not trying to make it look better than it did in real life. I'm trying to make it look like it does in real life. So I'm usually adjusting my settings so that it looks like it does in my own eyeballs rather than the dull photo that came out of my camera. So I'm going to show you the few super easy steps. There's a lot of editing you can do. I'm not that person. I'm like 15 seconds of editing and I want to get on with my life. So I'm going to show you my quick edit that can fix almost any photo. Okay. So you're going to, obviously you're going to use the edit button. Now I put this photo in our team page. If you want to follow along with me and do the steps, jump over to Facebook. Um, I can send this photo. Are you on your computer, Tricia? Because I can send you the photo if you want to zoom in with us. Uh, I'm gonna find it for you because I want you to be able to walk through the process everybody with us if you can now let me find it Christmas Day where are we there we go okay so I've sent that to Trisha the rest of you can grab it on our team page if you want it it's in the event um, welcome iPad 7 I'm not sure who you are but I'm happy you're here with us Hey, Helen. Okay, so if anybody's following along, we're just gonna hit the edit button. And then there's a wizard, okay? This little magical wand up here in the top. You could just use the magic wand feature. And when I magic wanded my photo, this is what it looked like. So it's 
a little bit better. You can, especially in the color of the bacon, you can see the difference, right? The bacon was sort of muddy colored before. So that's the wizard. I don't generally find that the wizard gives me the right look for food photography. When I use the wizard and I compare the photo to my plate, it doesn't look quite like my plate does. So most of the time, I don't use the wizard. But for non-food photography, the wizard usually does the trick. If I'm doing like an outdoor photo of my flower, I can use the wizard and it looks perfect. But when it's an indoor food, I don't find it does quite enough. So this is the other method. So the first method, is that we are going to use this little button down here. We're going to hit edit and we're going to go to this button that is the lighting. Okay, so this is iPhone steps. Of course, it'll be a little bit different if you're not on an iPhone. And if you're doing the steps, I would love for you to post your photo on our team page after. So then I could hit the little drop down. I don't want the drop down. I just want to hit the middle of that bar, the lighting bar. And I want to slide so that I'm getting more light in my photo. So can you see the difference if you're looking at the third photo? to the first photo, how it's brighter. And then the next thing I need to do is I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna hit the little three dots again, and I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna go to my black point, and I'm going to increase my black point. So what happens when you do the lighting is it lightens up your photo, but then it also lightens up your shadows, and it lightens up sort of the dark bits that should be dark, when you go and increase your black point, it increases your darkness back to where it should be again, if that makes sense. So on your screen, look at the difference between photo one and photo five. That was two quick edits, about maybe eight seconds to 15 seconds to edit that photo, to go from photo one to photo five. Now, it makes a big difference. Now, this is just my most recent photo. The, the, um, a lot of the options have been much more dramatic. I've seen photos that my team has posted. I've grabbed those photos. I've edited them, and I've sent them back and said, hey, here, see the difference? And they're always going, oh, wow, my photo looks so much better. So, you know, consider your angles. This was just a quick Christmas breakfast shot. We just threw the crap on the table and took a photo. But that little bit of editing makes a massive difference. So can anybody can anybody not see the difference or can anybody see the difference? I'd love some I'd love some uh, feedback. Oh, we lost Chantel. Okay, so that's food photography basics. Do the quick little edit. Learn more about editing if you want. I just don't want to get more into editing because you know I got a million things I want to do in my life. I just want to make my photos look more real, like they did in you know as I ate my food. Okay, so now we are going to do a movement break. I'm going to, oh, go ahead, Trisha. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say for those who have um, teens or young adults in their lives, they can do the editing and show you just like that. That's working in a high school, I've learned so much. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly, right? All the kids know all about this stuff all too well. Yeah, my, my daughter always wants to put a filter on my things. I'm like, I'm not doing a filter over all my food photos, but of course, real life photos can totally be filtered. But yes, oh, there's so many things you can do. But please don't get the Barbie app, for the love of God. There is an app out there that people are using on their photos, and they look like Barbie. Every time I see a certain person, I'm like, could you be more plastic looking? Please don't use that face tune or whatever that is. Every, like, every time I see her photos, I think, when people meet you in real life, do they look at you and go, oh, is that really you? Because she does not look at all real. So I think it's called Facetune. I just call it the Barbie app. Don't do that. Really, people, like, the world now is about authentic. That's why I don't want to make my photos look like something they're not. I really want them to look like what they are. Okay? So yeah, there's a lot of fun things and in get the teenager in your life into your, into your help or helping you. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this recording because we're gonna go into more detailed, connected um, work. But I actually am going to make everybody get up and move because how long has it been? It's been 40 minutes. Our brains, oh, it's been more than that. It's been forever. You gotta move. It's been an hour. We gotta get up and move. So. I'm actually going to see y'all here in the background, and I'm, if you're not moving, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to yell at you. I'm going to just try to figure out how to there. I'm going to stop this recording.